Hello everybody, this is Rob Swatsky from the York Campus of Hack, and welcome back to my Biology 121 Anatomy and Physiology 1 course. This is podcast 2.3b, Activation Energy and Catalysts. As we have learned, kinetic energy is the energy of matter in motion. Atoms, ions, and molecules are constantly moving, and in order for them to make or break bonds with each other, they must first make contact with each other. Collisions between atoms happen frequently, and if the collision energy is strong enough, the movement of the valence electrons can be disturbed. Activation energy is the amount of energy the reactants must absorb in order to make or break their bonds and start a chemical reaction. This absorbed energy causes their bonds to become unstable, which disrupts the movement of their valence electrons. Think of activation energy as the cost of the reaction that must be paid in order for the reaction to take place. It's like the price of a ticket that you have to pay in order to go see a concert. If you don't have enough money to purchase the ticket, then you aren't going to the concert. If there is not enough activation energy available to begin a reaction, then there will not be a reaction. To demonstrate activation energy, let's examine the following graph. The horizontal x-axis represents the progress of the reaction over time, while the vertical y-axis represents the potential chemical energy of the reactants and products. We can see that the reactants have a higher amount of potential energy than the resulting products. The raised peak in the graph represents the activation energy that must be supplied in order to break the reactants' bonds and start the reaction. As the activation energy is absorbed, the reaction begins, and energy is released as new bonds form in the products. This results in a lower amount of potential energy in the products. There are two important factors that influence the chances of starting a chemical reaction, concentration and temperature. One way to increase the number of collisions between the atoms of reactants is to increase the concentration of the reactants. The more atoms of the reactants you have in a small space, such as in a cell or cellular organelle, the more likely collisions will occur between the atoms. It's similar to people getting on and off a crowded elevator, where contact from the other elevator riders is inevitable. The temperature of a chemical's environment also plays a significant role in starting a chemical reaction. The higher the temperature, the faster the atoms will move, and the more likely a collision will occur between them. Both concentration and temperature present a challenge to reactions inside the human body because both factors are too low for reactions to occur at the rate necessary for life to sustain itself. And if both factors were to increase to the appropriate levels, there would be tremendous cellular damage and death. Fortunately for our continued survival, the body has a way around this dilemma by using a group of specialized chemicals called catalysts. Catalysts, such as enzymes, are able to start a reaction more quickly because they lower the amount of activation energy needed for the reaction to take place. If it weren't for catalysts, life would not be possible. The use of catalysts in chemical reactions is similar to shopping with coupons, where the coupon is like the catalyst allowing one to purchase an item for a lower price. Let's take a look at the earlier graph, but this time with the catalyst included in the reaction. The red curve represents the reaction without the catalyst, while the blue curve represents the reaction with the catalyst present. We can see that when the catalyst is present, the reaction can start with a lower amount of activation energy. 
Notice that the difference in potential energy between the reactants and products is the same with or without the catalyst. The catalyst doesn't lower the potential energy of the reactants. It just lowers the activation energy needed to get the reaction started. And just because atoms collide with each other doesn't necessarily mean that a reaction will occur. They have to collide together at just the right location on their chemical structures. Catalysts speed up reactions by helping to make sure the atoms of the reactants are in the correct orientation or position relative to each other so that when they collide they will be able to properly react. Cells are also energy efficient in their ability to reuse catalysts over and over again without changing their chemical structure. So there's no need to waste energy by continually breaking down and rebuilding new catalysts. This is like using a discount card each time you go shopping at your local market. You don't have to waste time reapplying for the card every time you visit the store. You can use your card again and again and enjoy the savings on the items you purchase. Thanks for watching and please feel free to contact me by email at rjswatsk at hack.edu if you have any questions or comments about the course.